STL Sproutcast. Welcome to STL Sproutcast, a podcast that takes you behind the scenes with people who produce engaging, enriching, educational, and fun St. Louis area activities and events. I'm St. Louis Sprout and About publisher Becky Maislin. And I'm managing editor Kathy Teeters. Few things capture the magic and enchantment of the holidays quite like the Nutcracker. Each year, the St. Louis Ballet brings this classic tale by E.T.A. Hoffman to life with spectacular sets, opulent costumes, and breathtaking performances. Today, we're talking with Amy Herkenrother, a dancer with the St. Louis Ballet, about what it's like to be part of this cherished St. Louis tradition. Hi, Amy. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, thank you so much for having me. How did you come to be involved with the St. Louis Ballet? So when I was finishing my ballet education as a high school senior, late teenager, I started auditioning for companies because I knew that I wanted to be a professional dancer and I wanted this to be my career. So I started auditioning all over the country. And luckily, uh, Gen Horiyuchi, the artistic and executive director here at St. Louis Ballet, offered me a contract and I felt like it was a really good fit. So I decided to say yes and take it. And I've been here ever since. I joined the company in 2013. And I just really love the company is filled with friendly people. You know, our dancers really do come together as a family. We're all friends with each other, both in the studio and out. And I also really liked the repertoire that the company puts on. We do a really nice mix of both classical full-length ballets as well as more contemporary works. So that really drew me here. What's a typical day like for a professional dancer? So every day we start with a warm-up class. No matter how long you've been dancing, this is how you start your day with a ballet technique class that's anywhere from one to one and a half hours. Sometimes on performance days, our warm-up is a little shorter. We're just getting in and out, getting the body cooking, and then moving on. But usually during our uh, rehearsal days, it's an hour and a half. So we're working on just honing our technique to prepare us to perform things later on. And then we rehearse usually up to about four or five hours a day, five or six days a week, you know, to prepare for our upcoming performances. And then a lot of us, myself included, once our rehearsal day ends, We'll often leave the studio and then do some additional cross training to kind of supplement our dancing, whether that be yoga, gyrotonics, um, cardio or strength training at the gym. Or sometimes if my body needs a rest that day, you know, my additional activity is taking a leisurely walk or taking a hot bath to just kind of calm everything down. I had no idea that you kept taking classes Every day. Yeah, every day. At that level of experience. That's Mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah, because then I think when we work on our basic technique so much, when a choreographer comes in and asks us to do something really out of the box, we kind of have that basic technique to rely upon to be able to accomplish those more complicated movements. And how long does it take to prepare for a specific performance? It kind of depends. I think that the shortest amount of time I personally have prepared for a performance was about two weeks. I remember that was really wild. Uh, It was partly because of a guest repetitor that was coming in to stage the choreography for a certain piece. You know, they have crazy schedules. They're traveling all over the country. So this piece in particular, this was the when the repetitor could come. And it happened to be really close to the performance, but you know, we everyone just buckled down and worked really hard, and we made it happen. But it's more typical that we have closer to a month to prepare, or sometimes a little more uh, for each performance. What do you love about performing in the Nutcracker? I love that with the Nutcracker because it's such a staple of each season. But yeah, we have more performances for the Nutcracker, whereas for some other productions, when it's just one weekend of shows, we do between about two and four performances. With the Nutcracker this year, I think we have about 15 or 16 performances. So with each performance is just more opportunity to be on stage and, you know, enjoying that performance experience. So I think I love just the additional stage time. What role will you be performing this season? 
So I'll be performing several different roles. We have a few different casts. Uh, because we have so many shows, it would be a lot for the same cast to be doing the same thing every performance. So I will be um, performing the role of Mrs. Stahlbaum, uh, Clara's mother um, in the party scene, as well as the lead marzipan. And um, the Sugar Plum Fairy is my biggest role this season. What's it like to perform different roles in the same ballet? I think it really keeps you focused and because sometimes, um, I'll give an example, in the marzipan section, which is a character in act two, there is kind of one lead female and then there are four additional females and they all kind of dance around together. And a lot of the choreography is very similar between kind of the core parts versus the leading one but every now and then there'll be like the same movement but on a slightly different count and there have been some years where I've been performing both the lead and the core obviously not in the same show but in the same you know run of shows so I have to stay really focused about okay what costume am I wearing (laughs) what am I doing now Um, so that I don't accidentally start slipping into the wrong choreography. Do you have a favorite number in the show? I think my favorite number is probably the Grand Pas de Deux for the Sugar Plum Fairy and her Cavalier. I just love that the choreography requires such clean classical technique. And I just think it's so visually pleasing and it's it just looks really magical on stage. We'll be right back after this brief message. Get ready to unwrap the fun. You'll find everything you need to plan some fun and merriment with your little elves in the St. Louis Spratton About Guide to Holiday Fun. Get details on Santa sightings, holiday shows, tree farms, light displays, winter break camps, and other holiday events in our handy resource guide. Visit stlsprout.com and click on Holiday Fun to start planning your holiday hijinks. What makes the St. Louis Ballet's production of The Nutcracker a great introduction to ballet for children? Well, I think it's really great for children in the audience to see the children on stage because our Nutcracker, and actually a lot of Nutcracker productions, most I would say, involve a large children's cast. Whereas in some other ballets, especially the full-length stories, we do sometimes have children performing with us, but not quite in the numbers that we have with the Nutcracker. So I think it's really special for the children in the audience to be able to look onto the stage and see other children up there performing and doing these impressive things. And I think it creates this really great example for what their bodies are capable of. Any tips for helping kids make the most of the experience? I think it could be helpful to educate children about the synopsis of the show before they get there, or even just prior to the show starting, because we do have um, a program in the theater with a synopsis of the whole ballet. So I think it might help if the kids are familiar with the story. They don't have to know every detail, but just so I think if they're kind of prepared a little bit for what they're going to see, then they can kind of enjoy it more. How do kids benefit from an early introduction to ballet? I think that ballet and the performing arts in general really foster a wonderful sense of creativity and imagination. And especially with full-length story ballets like The Nutcracker, you know, it is such a fantastical story. You have to suspend your disbelief while you're watching the story unfold. Like, you know that the mice on stage in the battle scene aren't real mice. There's some of our student cast dressed up in mouse costumes. But when you're in the audience, you know, you're really believing that these mice are attacking Clara and there's this battle going on. So I think that's really wonderful for children to be able to kind of explore their creativity and imagination in that way. And I think also not only as an audience member, but if children decide to take ballet classes, I think that helps create a wonderful sense of body awareness, but also the discipline required to be focused and, um, you know, listening to your instructor and taking their feedback and trying to apply it to your own self. 
St. Louis Ballet offers a special performance called The Nutcracker, A Shorter Tale. Tell us a little more about that. We are putting on actually two of these slightly shorter shows this year, uh, December 15th and 19th, both at 11 a.m. So this is almost exactly the same performance as always, but it's slightly abridged and it's also narrated. So this is great for anyone who maybe has a more limited attention span. The performance is just over one hour and there's no intermission. So it moves a little more quickly. And I think it's also nice to have that additional audio component with the narration. So in case somebody doesn't want to look at the synopsis beforehand, they can kind of hear some of that synopsis instead while watching it. These next two questions come from a local third grade class. First off, what is your best or favorite move in ballet? I think one of my, it's hard to pick just one, but I think one of my favorites is doing big jumps or what we call Grand Allegro. I think that sometimes you really feel like you're flying while you're doing it, which um, is always feels exciting to me. In our last production a few weeks ago, uh, Giselle, the role I was performing required a lot of jumping. And one section in particular, I had to come just running from backstage out of the wings with this long sequence of big jumps. And I truly felt like I was flying and weightless and it was super fun. (laughs) Second question from the class, do you ever get stage fright? I wouldn't exactly call it stage fright. I used to get really nervous to perform. And I think gradually as I just did it more, I started feeling more comfortable. But I do still get nervous backstage. I think especially when I'm standing in the wings, I can hear the music continuing. I know it's about to be my entrance. And, you know, I I really want to do a good job. So I feel a little nervous. But as soon as I step on stage, I really don't feel that anymore. And I'm just focused on my performance. So you don't need to picture anyone in their underwear in the audience? No. (laughs) No, not not anymore. Not anymore. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Uh, What advice would you give to young members of the audience who see you on stage this holiday season and think, wow, I want to be up there one day? I think they should start taking class if they're able to. St. Louis Ballet School offers a huge range of classes down from the mommy and me. I think the kids in that class are two or three and they're joined by a parent to just start exploring movement. And we have classes all the way through early childhood, high school, and into our trainee program, which is training students to become professional dancers. So I think the best thing you could do is if you're able, just start taking classes. Um, And like I talked about our student cast in the Nutcracker, our students, not the youngest levels, um, but starting, I think around age eight or nine, you have the opportunity to audition for the Nutcracker to be part of the production. So if you look on stage and think, I'd like to do that, you know, come start taking classes. Great. Anything else you'd like to share today? I think I just encourage people to come to the shows. You know, the Nutcracker is always a really magical experience, no matter if you've seen the production many times or you're brand new. And if you liked The Nutcracker, I think you'd also really enjoy our production of Sleeping Beauty coming up in April because it's the same composer, uh, Tchaikovsky. So it's this beautiful classical score. And actually, our production of Sleeping Beauty will be performed with live music with the Springfield Symphony Orchestra. So I'd say, come see The Nutcracker. You will love it. And if you did, also come check out Sleeping Beauty. It's another very kid-friendly, magical performance. Well, big thank you to our guest, Amy Herkenrother with the St. Louis Ballet for joining us today. And a special shout out to the students in Miss Dieter's third grade class for sending in some great questions. See St. Louis Ballet's performance of The Nutcracker November 25th through 26th, December 15th through 17th, and December 19th through 23rd at Two World Performing Arts Center at the University of Missouri-St. Louis. For itty-bitty sugar plum fairies that might not be able to sit through a full performance, St. Louis Ballet will offer The Nutcracker A Shorter Tale December 15th and December 19th at 11 a.m. Tickets for all performances may be purchased at MetroTix.com. The St. Louis Ballet School also offers a variety of classes and camps for all ages and skill levels. 
To learn more about the St. Louis Ballet, including upcoming performances, classes, and more, visit stlouisballet.org. To find more fun holiday activities and events for your family, visit our holiday fun guide at stlsprout.com. If you have questions about today's podcast or suggestions for future STL Sprout casts, visit stlsprout.com and click the podcast menu tab to send us a message. You can also visit us on Facebook or Instagram at STL Sproutcast. If you like what you heard today, be sure to leave us a review wherever you get your podcasts and share STL Sproutcast with your friends and family. As always, for more fun things to do with your family in the St. Louis area, visit stlsprout.com where you'll find the latest news and events from your favorite destinations. While you're there, be sure to subscribe to our free e-newsletters. Sprout out!